Are you any good at sticking to your New Year's resolutions? Personally, I'm terrible at it, but hopefully 2024 we can turn that around now. I was tempted to do maybe like a New Year's resolution for each club, but considering that I'm a little bit crook at the moment, I thought I would go down a different path. And that being, if you follow the NFL, there was a very popular ad coming into this NFL season about the fact that players were writing a script and the whole league was rigged. Very tongue-in-cheek, a little bit hilarious. I thought I'd go down that path. If I was writing the AFL script for 2024, here's what I would include. Here are some things that I would love to see throughout or to finish the 2024 season. And let me know what you think and what you want to see in 2024 in the comment section below. For the last time in 2023, let's have a chat. First of all, Mitch Lewis plays every game. Now, in his last 22 games, Lewis has kicked over 60 goals. So if you put that into one season, that is going to be a magnificent one. But the young man has not played more than 16 games in one season yet. And that simply needs to change, not only for his personal reasons, but for Hawthorne's forward line as well. Yes, Marby or Chol, Jack Gunston and Jack Ginevan were brought in to the Hawthorne lineup in order to bolster the attack, but if your number one forward isn't getting things done consistently, whether it's getting on the field or kicking goals, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Now, when he gets on the park, there's no issue with him scoring, but is he going to be able to do that consistently? Yes, this is my non-biased take. Apologies. I'm a Hawthorne fan. If there's one bloke I want to see play 22, 23 games this year, it's the man who inherited Jared Ruffhead's number two. I love Mitch Lewis, and every Hawthorne fan does as well. Get him on the park, and he can challenge for the Coleman, in my opinion. The second thing I'd love to see is a showdown final, which is crazy, because we haven't seen one since 2005, and that game wasn't particularly close at all, with Adelaide even pushing West Coast the next week in the preliminary final. But these two teams look like they're going to be in pretty good shape, with most fans admitting they're both probably going to make the eight next year in some kind of way, even though I believe that the Crows are going to finish top four next year. A 6-7 finish is probably going to be a bit more likely, but something that would not only just absolutely set South Australia on fire metaphorically in terms of the build-up and how they would conduct themselves and the way that the city of Adelaide would erupt at the sight of another showdown final, but it would be epic viewing. Showdowns have been neglected on the fixture for way too long, in my opinion, they should definitely be standalone Thursday, Friday night games. They just should. Whilst both teams are pretty good, they absolutely should be. But the next best thing there is force it. How do you force it? Give us a final. Give us those two awesome midfields. Which defense can hold up because it's seemingly the weakness of both sides? Will a Rochelle and a Rankin stand up more than potentially Port Adelaide's tools? How will the veterans go? Ooh, it's a tantalising prospect and we're only in December. My goodness me. The next thing I would love to see is improved commentary. Now, there could be a bunch of ways that this can happen, but I'm only going to go down the path of two ways I think we can improve things pretty quickly. The first one being, let's celebrate who's winning. I know that commentators want to keep it interesting and that if a game is blowing out a little bit in the last quarter, they're worried about fans turning off. So anything that the side that is behind can do to potentially try to get themselves into the game is going to be celebrated. I understand that. But it's the level of neglect that the team that is 38 points in front, for example, cop during a commentary stint, which in my mind is incredible. And we focus as a sport, and AFL are by no means the only ones that do this, but we focus on losers more than winners in terms of teams. And I don't like that. I really don't. I think we need to celebrate the good. I think we've got real tall poppy syndrome in Australia about people that succeed, and I think it needs to be celebrated more. Yes, we don't want to become like America, I understand that. But they treat their sports stars like gods. I'm not suggesting we do the same, but the way they get treated when things go their way, I'm not a massive fan of. And the second thing that I'd like to improve in the commentary uh, is, can we stop the Vic bias, please? I went and rewatched. Uh, the grand final and the prelim final. And Brisbane and GWS barely got mentioned at all. And I know that some of you have brought this to my attention throughout comment sections throughout 2023. And it's something I did try to take more notice of, I've got to be honest. But it wasn't until I could actually go back and reflect that I thought, hmm, mm, this is really imbalanced. 
we 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 want as least or as le- we don't want prejudice. We don't want bias in our sports commentary. We really don't. Or if we do, lean into it heavily. Press red for Ed may have been a little bit silly, but could you get fans commentating games if you want the real bias par? Potentially. But that's not what this is. So let's keep it even, let's keep it fair, and let's call the game. I don't think that's too much to ask. Bont winning the Brownlow. Always the bridesmaid, never the burrow is what it seems like for the Western Bulldogs champion. So let's let's have him win one. And I'm not suggesting we do kind of what Leonardo DiCaprio had to go through for his Oscar, in which case, you know, The Revenant is fine. Don't get me wrong, it's a good movie. Um, but compared to the work that didn't get him Oscar wins, it doesn't stand on the same plane there. Now, again, like Leonardo DiCaprio, Bont did lose the Brownlow to players who had extraordinarily good seasons. But would it be right for Marcus Bontempelli to end his career without a Brownlow? It would honestly feel a little bit strange. So the quicker the better. I think he turns 28 this year. So I'm not saying it's now or never. But the time is running out. And I'd love to see it happen this year. If you thought a showdown final would erupt Adelaide in a big way, Collingwood Carlton Grand Final would just be insane. It really would. And for reasons that I even think non-Victorians can figure out, the fact that these two teams obviously do not like each other would be the first time they've played off in a grand final since 1979. Let's... Can we just make it happen? Now, what would be the worst reaction? Which team would react worse if they lost? I honestly think it would be Carlton. Uh, I think that simply put, uh, the Pies did get their flag last year. Now, if you're going to lose a grand final, you don't want to lose it to Carlton, is what I can probably hear every Collingwood fan that's watching this say. But you, you've got your flag. So if you did win another one, you won back-to-back the second one against Carlton, I think we might be staying away from Ligon Street for a while. But seeing how this town reacts to a Collingwood-Carlton grand final would be whew, bloody insane. Let me tell you, my goodness. But do I want to see it? In a heartbeat. So that's it, guys, for 2023. I'm going to put some stats up here of raw numbers, and I just want to say a massive thank you for an amazing year, a year that's honestly changed my life, to be completely honest with you. And I think this will be the last of the second last video in this studio as I'm moving house uh, very early on in January, going from Bayside, Victoria, to Gippsland, Victoria for a little bit. So that ought to be fun. Looking forward to the new setup, seeing how that goes, but I can't wait to bring you more content in 2024. I hope you can bring more footy-loving mates down there. I hope so much more of you can join the Daz Talks footy family and we can keep this train going. But whether you've watched one video, all of them, or wherever you sit in between, thank you so much for all your support. It is massively appreciated. I can't wait to ditch this throat infection. Have a happy new year. Stay safe. Look after each other, you absolute legends, and I'll see you very soon.